What's up, everybody? It's Priyon Joni. So my brand new computer just came in. And before we unbox it, this video is brought to you by Direct Music Service. DMS is an online database for working DJs and mix artists. It's the one-stop shop where you can get your music from for your gigs. It's a searchable, organized database with thousands of edits, remixes, and different versions of your favorite tracks from many different genres. What's also awesome about Direct Music Service, if you're always on the road just like me, they have this awesome mobile app so that you can search your favorite tunes, put them on a wish list, and they'll be ready for you on your Dropbox folder when you get home. You can now save some money and get a discount using one of these two coupon codes. Use the code PJMONTHLY and get 30% off your first month off any monthly subscription. Use the coupon code PJ yearly and get 10% off your entire first year of any yearly subscription. Go to directmusicservice.com today to sign up. All right, so I ordered a new laptop. It's the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And one of the things I really appreciate about Apple is the fact that they put it in an ugly, unattractive box. So it's not super obvious it's an Apple product. You would have to really look at the address to know that it's from Apple. And it's not just the laptop that came like this. The free AirPods was the same way. And I haven't bought, I haven't had a purchase of a new MacBook Pro since 2011. And that 2011 MacBook Pro was replaced two years later through Apple Care with a 2013 MacBook Pro with Retina display. We got the computer right here, completely wrapped in plastic. So my computer that I've had right before this is six years old. Starting to age, starting to show a few signs of its age. So I figured why not get the 16 inch MacBook Pro? And some folks have said this when I posted about it. Why are you getting the Intel MacBook Pro when Apple just announced that they're putting the ARM processor in the next line of products? Well, the reason I got the Intel one is because I use a lot of music production software. I use DJ software. I use video editing software, Photoshop, all sorts of multimedia. And my experience over the last nine years is that a lot of the software companies that I depend on can take a significant amount of time just to get themselves compatible for the next OS X version. Like it never fails. Every time there's a new operating system, there's always some DJ who gets a little too gung ho, updates their operating system and their DJ software doesn't work. So my thinking is I know the ARM processors, you know, like I feel it, they're gonna be great, but I know there's gonna be a maturity period. I know Apple says, all the legacy software is gonna work. Okay, I'm not gonna take any corporation's claim about, oh, it's gonna work. <laughs> Experience tells me that there's a maturity period and by the time I'm done using the Intel uh, MacBook, which is about four, maybe four or five years, hopefully is the life I get out of this. It's my hope that everything that I need has adapted to the ARM system. And I mentioned DJ software. I think Serato is gonna take a while to adapt to the ARM architecture. A lot of PC guys know that Serato doesn't work its best even on the AMD processors. And to be honest, I don't ever <laughs> plan on taking this computer to a gig. So why does it matter that you use Serato? Well, I'm gonna be using Serato on it to build my library because I use an external, but I'm gonna be using one of my other two MacBooks for my gigs. And usually that's my MacBook Air. So I haven't opened a brand new MacBook in six years. So this is an exhilarating feeling. Sound like a Apple fanboy. I'm not an Apple fanboy. I got Windows on my Mac. One thing Apple has perfected is the art of packaging their products. It makes you feel great when you open them. It's not like in random cardboard. And I always keep the box in case I sell the unit, which I never do. I always find a use for any extra computer I have. I love the smell of new gear. I don't remember if I've even checked the 16 inch out at the Apple store. I think this might be the first time I'm actually holding onto one. 
it's kind of weird because proportionately, it is thicker than the previous generation because this the 16 inch is the answer to all the thermal issues of the previous 15 inch. But it almost doesn't feel any different in size from my 2013 15 inch because the thickness on it and its width, it feels about the same size and the weight doesn't feel strange. But I went with the space gray because I want, you know, in a quick glance, I want to make sure that this laptop, I know I don't accidentally pick the wrong one up when I'm rushing out of the house. Oh, it just turns on when you open the lid. Let's take this out. Like I said, I'm coming from a 2013, so this trackpad is gigantic. I'm very happy with the scissor switch keys. It feels familiar. It's not like the loud English ones. English as the main language. Yes, I would like to use English as the main language, Siri. Oh yeah, the trackpad is haptic, so it has that click up instead of having the, the mechanical click on it. So that's something that I'm going to have to get used to. So I've been excited to get on the 16-inch MacBook Pro for a while because I was really scared about that generation of the 15 inch when they first introduced the models with the touch bar they were just notorious for thermal throttling and of course the infamous super loud butterfly switch keyboard and for now i'm going to set this up as a brand new computer with no transfer of data but later on this week i'm going to take the time machine backup of my macbook pro retina my 2013 and i'm going to transfer it into this computer so it's going to take over being the soul of that laptop and then I'm going to clear that laptop. I don't know if it's because this keyboard is new, but it does feel a little bit more stable than the than the previous butterfly keyboard. I know this is nitpicking, but the way it clicks, it's not exactly the same tone. I know because it's my first time on this trackpad, I'm going to it feels too big <laughs> because when I rest my palms on them, they touch the pad. I just want to get far enough so we can explore the laptop a little bit. All right. So Let's explore this. I just noticed I reach for the key to increase the brightness and I forgot we got, okay. So as much as I'm not excited about the touch bar, I'm gonna have to get used to using it because all my keys for brightness and backlight, keyboard backlight, controls, volume is all on it. So going around, feels solid like my last MacBook Pro, but I do notice that because the display is thinner, it does feel a little bit more flexible, which kind of scares me because I hope I don't ever break my retina display, but that's what Apple cares for. And what's awesome today is you get two accidents included with it because back with my old MacBook Pro, I dropped it and I had to pay for the first retina display replacement. And of course, I'm gonna to have to get used to this. This is um, all USB type C, including the power, but that's a weird spot for the headphone jack. Those Apple engineers. So if you're wondering, I spent a total with taxes and Apple Care, $4,549 on this laptop. And before taxes and Apple Care, it was just a pinch under $4,000. I was this close to selecting 64 gigs of RAM until I read an article that it doesn't really improve your rendering time, which is basically the main reason why I bought this computer. It's mostly for my video editing because I know that the more I render with my other laptop, the more I'm basically killing it. It doesn't do it when I'm using DJ software like Serato or Rekordbox, but anything graphic intensive, I couldn't do. And plus it had an NVIDIA video card in it, so I couldn't upgrade past High Sierra because Apple and NVIDIA no longer get along, so Apple no longer allows NVIDIA to make drivers for those old MacBooks. I'm probably gonna keep that computer on High Sierra so it can always use the NVIDIA card. But we're not talking about that laptop, we're talking about the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and it's running on Catalina 10.15.5. So let's listen to the speakers on this because I'm kind of curious and I can't say this enough I love how the keyboard feels I've been using it for the past 20 minutes now and it doesn't annoy me like the original releases with the touch bar 
the 16 inch model is basically the answer to that. And the thing about the display, and so maybe you can see it over there, it has that retina quality of everything crisp and sharp. I do like the thinner bezels on it. It doesn't really stand out to me as a bigger display as my 15 inch, but would you really be able to tell a one inch difference? Let's play Sound of the Sea and listen to the speakers. Okay, this is something that Apple is actually good at with the MacBook Pros. Like every model release, the speakers always sound better. And from the 2011 to the 2013, you always notice that the bass just gets a little bit better. And now I'm jumping two generations forward. And I have to say, not only is it louder and still clear, but it is comparable to my ears as far as its dynamics and how bassy it is. It sounds like a really small Bluetooth speaker, but in stereo. And the reason why that's important to me is because I don't like using headphones when I make music. I actually like writing to the speakers. Sometimes with the AirPods, headphones usually hurt my head. I like to be portable when I write. Sometimes I'll be upstairs, sometimes I'll be outside. It doesn't matter. It's not until I'm ready to start mixing it down that I bring it to the studio monitors. I almost do none of my writing here in the studio. They are the most amazing speakers I've heard so far on a MacBook Pro. I will say this though, as I was mentioning earlier, the display does feel a little flimsy, almost like a MacBook Air. And I'm almost scared to put the protective cover on it, which I'm about to do shortly. And I feel like they did this because of aesthetics and you lose the Apple backlight on the back. But I am excited to definitely start using this with Ableton, with Adobe Premiere, After Effects, and all the other multimedia projects I do outside of just DJ software and doing gigs. So hopefully in the next three or four years, Apple doesn't decide to say, we're not supporting the Intel products anymore. Fingers crossed. But this is gonna be the powerhouse of all my heavy computing. All right, check out this bad boy. 12 megabytes of RAM, 500 megabyte hard drive, built-in spreadsheet capabilities, and a modem that transmits at over 28,000 BPS. Wow, what are you gonna use it for? Games and stuff. <laughs> All right, so here are my specs. 32 gigabytes of RAM, DDR4. For my graphics, I have the AMD Radeon Pro 5600M, which is the best graphic card you can get right now for the MacBook Pro. I believe it replaced the Vega graphics. And this one came out with the current model that was released in May. And it has a two terabyte solid state. I didn't want too much because I don't even have two terabytes to back up in my backup hard drives, but I knew I wanted more than 512 gigabytes, which I have right now, mostly for plugins, programs, and contact libraries. I hate having my contact libraries in an external hard drive because sometimes you open up a project and you have to take the time to close the project, connect your hard drive, and reopen it. So hopefully with two terabytes and I'm using less than half a terabyte right now, I have room for long video projects as well as the potential to work on 4K video. The thing I love about the touch bar is the resolution on it looks so good that it looks like an actual button instead of a display that's on your keyboard. And I think that has to do with the fact that it's more of a matte finish on the touch bar versus the gloss that's on the main display. But before I actually end this video, we're gonna put on the UAG case on it. I use a UAG case now for my older MacBook Pro. And the way UAG actually advertised these, the way they marketed them, is that these are military grade and they showed a video where somebody actually dropped it from a pickup truck and the computer was fine. I believe that's a little exaggerated because my brother has the 15 inch MacBook Pro with the touch bar and he dropped it. He ended up breaking something. So I'm not planning on dropping this laptop like that. 
But I do believe the UAG case is probably one of the better cases out there. I know it's a little pricier. If I'm gonna have a $4,500 laptop, I better not be using some cheap $20 shell case. And I know there's alternatives, but I have no problem going with what has worked for me. So one of my fears about this case was when you look at it, these corners look like they were made of hard plastic and they're not. They're transparent, but they're rubberized. One of the things I didn't like about the one made for the Retina model was whenever you remove the case, and I've done this to two of them already, you would break a piece of plastic off right here. And it looks like they decided not to have the plastic go around all the way because that was a spot. It wasn't really a protective spot either. It was just, it would just break off when you try to remove the case. So I'm kind of glad that's not there. So before I get my fingerprints all over this side of the case, let's drop the MacBook Pro in here. And mind you, I had a UAG case after I broke my first Retina display. Once I put it in a UAG case, my laptop is six years old and the whole thing out of the case looks brand new. No scratches, no marks. I have dropped it as high as from bed to the carpeted floor. So I have some faith with UAG's products. And I know if I do a little bit more research, it might not be the case for everybody, but it's treated me well. So, and I'm gonna stick to what has worked for me. I find this kind of funny. The automatic avatar is a vinyl record. I wanna get fingerprints on there. So one of the things that annoys me a little bit about just having a case is sometimes dust gets in between here and then I have to open it up and clean it out. And it doesn't look like it's really that protective. I think that's still gonna be an issue. But it seems to be thicker with the slits. It's not as easy to touch the actual surface of the MacBook. And it still has the holes for the side ventilation. But yeah, this is my new MacBook Pro 16 inch. Might be one of the last Intels, who knows? Maybe there might be another upgrade, but, but hopefully this is my last brand new MacBook Pro with the Intel processor. And looking forward to using this thing with what should be amazing render times with videos. All right, if you got any comments, questions, or anything to ask about the 16 inch, MacBook Pro, or any ideas of anything you want me to try, whether it's DJ software, music production, or video editing related, let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear your thoughts, answer any questions, learn anything new from you guys that I didn't cover in this video, or get some badass ideas on what to try with this machine. If you like this video, please smash that like button. And if it's your first time here and you found this video useful, please click that subscribe button and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. Don't forget to add me on Instagram and get sneak peeks of my upcoming videos. Really appreciate you guys for watching. Take care and stay healthy.